here we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Crypto CJ's Trade of the Day. This is the Monday Night Zoom edition. So a lot of interesting things going on in the market. Uh, we will go ahead and get started with the Bitcoin chart. And if, um, let's see, let me get over to the Bitcoin chart, share my screen. And there we go. Uh, you guys should be seeing the Bitcoin five minute chart. Can I get a thumbs up if you're, if you're seeing it? All right, Steve and Kim say yes. So thank you guys. Okay, so Bitcoin has been dipping a bit uh, this afternoon and then starting to recover. It's been really just bouncing between like 50, 50,000 and, and 60,000. Let's look at the day chart to get a better feel for that. And I drew these trend lines here. I made an adjustment when we had that drop uh, last week down into the 40s briefly, and then it came up strong, um, close to 54. It's been bouncing between these, these values ever since. Uh, you know, this 58 went up to 64. We haven't been back there since mid-April. Mid but uh, it does seem to be working its way back. But Bitcoin has a challenger now. It's not just Bitcoin, the king of the circle. I mean, Ethereum might be more worthy of our attention right now because check this out, pumping like crazy. Um, this is the one hour chart and you know, I need to update my, my fibs, my Fibonacci retracements. The last one I did was on Friday. But it blew past this 3000 mark yesterday, you know, like it was wet paper. It didn't even come back and test anything. You would, you would expect to, to see it, you know, test this resistance here around 2950 or maybe, maybe even the SMA line, but it's, it's just pumping up. We had a mild sell off here and then it keeps going. So when I see something like this, a big move on any of the coins, what I like to do is look at the news items. So um, I'm on the Ethereum here. This is my uh, my um, leverage token list. I actually have Ethereum on almost all my lists. And right now it's showing me the uh, watch list and details. This is the alerts, but on TradingView, if you click this button on here, the news, it'll bring up the most recent news. Sometimes there isn't any, if it's kind of an obscure token, not real popular, but Ethereum, there's a lot of price analysis, some news. And I did look at one of these articles. Um, I don't recall which one, but regardless, it's good to read some of these articles on coins you're interested in. Uh, if any of you are on Facebook, I, I do have a Facebook page, Crypto CJ, and I post uh, these, you know, I'll repost these articles if I, if I think they're useful to to uh, you know, day traders and even swing traders. So this is a good resource to have. It's really convenient if you're looking for the reason something's pumping or, or tanking, so. Um, actually it's saying headlines for BTC. I'm not sure why that is. Hmm. So that's, um, you know, what I see has been going on in the markets with Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bitcoin, Bitcoin survived most of the bad news that's been coming out the last couple of weeks. It's still trending up. Obviously, we see what uh, what Ethereum is doing. Um, it's trending up hard, and it'll be interesting to see if this if this continues through uh, through most of the month month of May. Oh, one more thing to look at is Bitcoin dominance. Um, get that in this list. BTC.D, this is a really handy thing to have to look at. You can see it's been dropping like a rock for quite a while. And it's a beautiful thing when this is dropping, but Bitcoin's price action is still good. You know, it's still, 
got a nice range in between say 52 and 60. And when it's dropping like this, that means the alts are, are you know, are, are moving. And we've seen that mostly in Ethereum. Uh, BNB has been moving really well. Um, and looks like we just hit UTC midnight. So now some of these are showing negative, but um, most of these were positive earlier today uh, in, in the changes. And um, you know, BNB was up you know, six or 8%, Ethereum was close to 10%. So you know, this is a good thing to check out probably on a daily basis to see where Bitcoin dominance is. All right, any questions on the market in general, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and or Bitcoin dominance before I move over to altcoin alert? Okay. So I have made a few altcoin alert based trades today. Um, I'm assuming that most of you in this group are involved in some way in altcoin alert. If you're not, then you may want to wait and after this, I'll talk about iCoin Pro, and some of you are in both, like I am. So uh, this morning I traded um, Access, AXS, and it was in the 80s under very bullish. I made a quick, like two and a half percent on that. Not real glamorous, but those are the kind of stack up and move your balance. Uh, oh, here it is. It's uh, number two, 90.5. So we can click on this and get a, a view of its um, price action and the AA score. Um, I do have a confession to make. I made an error, uh, a pretty consistent error the last few weeks. I thought that there was some relationship between this white line, um, which is the AA score, uh, the, what I was calling the sentiment line, and then you know the actual um, price of the coin, but there is not. Uh, Terry and the Altcoin Alert and the AA uh, Slack group pointed that out to me, and I had a long talk about it. And if you move this, you know, this index here, you can see the white line stays still and the green lines move. If there was a, um, you know, a relationship between these two, both lines would be moving. So I swear I was. I learned this in one of the Friday afternoon meetings, but I may have just misunderstood what the teaching was. So, you know, that's on me. I hope I didn't um, mislead anybody. Uh, as a practical matter, I always suggest that you don't just make a trade based on an AA score. You do your technical analysis. You know, you're looking for one, two, three dips and squeezes and and candle action and things like that before you you place a trade. You always want to be making a good entry point. So. And it's sort of a good news, bad news thing. Um, the bad news is this isn't as useful as I thought. The good news is I was excluding some AA scores that did not have this kind of gap. So since there's no relationship between these two, um, you, know, you can go ahead and, and evaluate those, um, those uh, situations where the green line's actually above or at the white line. So uh, my apologies if anybody was, uh, you know, off put by that. Um, yeah, this having these two scores here is merely a convenience just to see so you don't have to have, you know, two screens open. I've got two screens and multiple windows open at all times. So it doesn't really matter to me. But um, anyway, this. Um, so CJ, this is Andy. It, so yeah, go could ahead. You, Andy. Yeah, could you explain how we use this portion of the graph? It's like just for convenience. The, the value it provides is to show you the score, uh, the, the the price of the coin and the score on one on one screen. Okay. And what what's the top under the the nine point oh seven? Is that the current price? Right. Nine point oh seven, which should be maybe it's lagging a little bit. So reload and uh, still showing 922 here and 902 here. So I'm not sure why that is, but um, you know the 90.49, 90.5, it's probably rounding up. So yeah, that's what's okay. Going so on. the white line is the actual AA score. That's right. 
Okay, and the green reflects what? The current price. Current price, okay. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah, so any other questions on that? Um, just wanna make sure that this is just for convenience. There's no relationship between these, these data points, so. Uh, CJ, can you hear me? I can hear you. Should I go back yes. to that? CJ, uh, just um, to empathize with you, I was uh, a little bit um, of a misunderstanding there as well. Uh, but my understanding is, and please correct me if I'm wrong, there is the correlation is that the white line is the, uh, the level of sentiment. Mm -hmm. And I was given to understand from instruction that there is a direct correlation between the price and the sentiment. So that if we have a gap such as this one here, it would appear from a trading point of view that um, there's a possibility, strong possibility that that price will move towards that sentiment. So it can be used in that way. Is that still correct or did I have that all wrong? Uh, you and I both had that wrong. <laughs> According to, to Terry and the Crypt Nation group is the best chartist I've, I know. So, um... Yeah, and that's because of what I showed you here. If, if there was a relationship or correlation, these lines would be moving together and they're not. So um, it's not, I just don't wanna give you a false sense of confidence. This is still a trade we should look at, uh, you know, just because of the AA score and in the, in the 90s, you know, we like that. And so if we have an AA score in the 90s and a good, a good entry point on the charts, you know, that's a trade to, to go ahead and move forward, but don't get a false sense of confidence because of, of, this, um, of this gap. Now, I, I, that was my understanding too from a, from a teaching or a, you know, a Friday afternoon, um, when, you know, one of those calls we, we have pretty consistently. So I'm not even sure if they know it. Um, because it on the surface it looks like it it would be useful and to be and I traded it based on that assumption and had some success so you know but I think the success was based on just the AA score not the not the gap here so I was under the same impression gentlemen and I I'm pretty sure it was in one of the Friday afternoon teachings yep so all right. Well, I'm feeling, I'm feeling better because I, I was pretty sure I, I didn't make this up. So, uh, and I was, you know, teaching what they were teaching. And, but again, so, yeah, just wondering. Uh, I remember that discussion with Terry. He went into he elaborated fairly well, and it was really, as always, he's fantastic with his uh, observations. But mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if he was talking about some. I remember thinking then that maybe he was talking about something different again. Um, um, no, I, I can't explain it because too far back. But I'm just wondering if mm. we're actually meeting the middle on this one. Well, he went. Out, he and I went back and forth on the the Slack group, and then I went. I'm going to call him, or I'd say call me. And we we were on the phone for I don't know, good 30, 40 minutes, talking about this and some other things. You know how we like to trade, and you know he and I are very different traders. But um, but he knows his his charts and and how graphs work and things like that more than I do. So, and it was really just pretty simple. If, like I said, if, if there's a relationship, these would move together and they're not. So all you have to do is change this value and, you know. But again, without drawing this out too long because we have limited time, mm -hmm. if they moved together, then that would detract from our ability to use them the way we've been using them, wouldn't it? Well, if they move together, the gap would remain. So, you know, say if I, if I would be useless to us. Well, if, um, if I drug this down to, to make this, you know, to, to have more values in here then the white line should, should move at the same time. That's, that's my understanding of it. Now, if, you know, Josh Frank or one of the other powers that be, you know, comes across with an explanation as to why this works this way, you know, I'd be open to hearing that. But at this point, you know, I'm not giving any additional value to this gap, nor am I ignoring coins <laughs> where, you know, the white line's below the green line. So, 
And uh, I just thought that this was the time to to bring that up. Uh, you know, we um, I suggested that that Terry contact um, somebody over there and and talk about it. I don't know if he did that or not, but uh, so that's can that's ask, where we are on that. Can I ask one more question on the AI before we move on? Sure. Um, a little while ago, I followed your um, your idea of of sorting with the trading activity. Sure. And I had tremendous um, uh, tremendous benefit from that. Um, but I noticed, for example, with the, um, the coin that you used there before, Axel, I think it was, the trading activity was pretty lousy, uh, even though the other things lined up. And I noticed uh, yesterday, well, yesterday for me, anyway, in general, um, most of the bullish and the, and the, um, you know, the good looking coins were terrible um, trading activity. Are you you're still using the trading activity as an indicator or is it? You know, something we can just forget with the other parameters that are available now. Uh, that's a good question. Um, and I've tried to explain this. I did go over this in my most recent video on Friday. At least I think I did. But um, no, actually, I, I brought this up in, in, in the Slack group. Um, when you're using the AA score, the AA score is trying to find, trying to find out what's going to do this. What's going what's gonna to work its way up? What can we catch before it pumps? So since it needs room to move, it's usually not going to be very good technically at the moment. So long story short, if you're, if you're relying on the AA score, ignore this. Ignore all these and, and just use the AA score. If you're not finding what you know, happen to be good trades on the AA score, or you'd rather be more of a trend of trader catching something that's already hot and trying to scalp off another five or 10%. And I like to do that too. Then you take these others into consideration, but these are mutually exclusive for the most part. Does that make sense? Uh, Kim, not sure if you're, looks like you're frozen. So anyway, I hope I explained that uh, that well, but how I do it, AA score is the first thing I look at. Um, and then I don't look at the rest of these columns. And then if I move to a trading activity sort or one hour projected range sort or long-term sentiment sort, which are other three others that I've done before and done videos about, then I, for the most part, ignore the AA score. I usually want at least a, a neutral AA score in that scenario. Um, and I've also emphasized that if I'm sorting based on trading activity, I'm trying to catch 10 to 20% in the 24 hour range. You know, something that's already up over 30%, I'm thinking that's probably too late. Um, but you know, this one here, Maker, uh, let's bearish. So, you know, if that's neutral or better, I'd be interested in, in at least checking that out. Um, and the, the ones that have stars I have here are on Binance that I, I like to trade. So um, this one has potential, BAL, 13%, 20, 20, 24 hour change, you know, thumbs up trading activity, you know, in the low bullish range on the AA score. So this one could be good. You know what, let's check it out. Um, So what I do anymore is I look at the day charts first to see, you know, the overall picture and balancers hit an all time high. So that is a little discouraging to me as a day trader. What's it done in the last hour? It's gone trending up and then spiked here. You know, can we catch a dip? You know, can we catch something going down like this and then going up again? I don't know, it'd be hard to do. I mean, I'm not seeing a good trade at this moment, a good entry point. What I don't like is when they're hanging around the SMA line. I like to see trending action up here or like a, a dip trade sequence here. This isn't a real good example because we don't have a big bubble, but we have one, two, like three, four dips, four small dips here. This would interest me. I'd probably wait for a you know, MACD cross, 
like the blue line goes past the orange line, RSI trending up, candles trending up, maybe catch it right about here and look for some resistance, get a quick 3%, you know, something like that might work, but uh, don't really care for what I see on this one. So let's, um, let's look at a couple AA scores and see if we can find something useful. Uh, this is a coin I like a lot, Digibyte. Let's see if, um, yeah. So not really seeing anything there real useful. I think this is on my list. All right, so we, this is interesting. Um, Ethereum just dropped. Bitcoin just dropped and looks something like this. So in this situation, we have, we have a pretty big first dip and then a little bit of a recovery. I probably wouldn't trade this. I want to see if there was a second or third dip. Uh, cardinal rule of dip trades, never trade the first dip. Because usually this happens. Shoo, starts to come up. Another dip, another dip. So but this is something I'd want to keep an eye on. Maybe do a put an alert down here. You know, if this comes down for a second or a third dip, it'd probably be in this vicinity here around 1440. So that might be something to do to uh, to keep an eye on this one. Let's say you catch it down here. You know, up to the SMA lines, 4.68%. Some resistance there. If you want to go a little higher risk, top of the Bollinger Band, 6.3%. And then got a bunch of candles here showing some resistance, you know, 7.3%. And, you know, the more the higher you go, the riskier it is. Uh, there's more resistance here from, from yesterday or from early this morning. That's over 10%. So this one has potential. I would probably want to catch a low buy order down here. All right, any questions on Digibyte or um, Balancer? Okay, Doge. I always trade, uh, speaking of Terry, he and I have a, a disagreement about, um, uh, I, I prefer to use, alerts and ladder buys and and like a lot of traders he like he prefers uh, stop losses i have been incorporating more stop losses in my my trades especially to protect profit um anytime i trade doge i put a stop loss in because it's so volatile so um this one has stayed above the sma line for most of the afternoon it's gone a little sideways here i think if i saw some this is like a towards the all time high though, isn't it? Yeah, this one's um, right about the all time high. So I don't know if I'd be interested in this. I'd probably want to see a dip sequence, dip sequence, and excuse me, in this vicinity, and then catch it going up again but again with this with this coin make sure you protect yourself but it's currently the third highest market cap i've never seen in the year and a half i've been trading ethereum higher than bitcoin for for a whole day and at this point you know ethereum's 4.4 billion and bitcoin's 3.3 billion that's about 20% off the top of my head, Ethereum greater than, than Bitcoin. So that's, uh, that's pretty amazing. But I digress. Um, yeah, so I don't really see a trade here on Doge. Let's, uh, let's do one more altcoin alert. Any uh, requests on, we've got T-Fuel we could look at. Yeah. 
Yeah, see, there's only a small gap here. And you know, before I might have excluded this one, but um, now that I'm not concerned with, the, with this distance, I'm going to go ahead and look at it. I think I'm already in T fuel, so I'm not going to make a trade on it. But no, I'm out of that one. That's right. I sold, sold that one over the weekend. Uh, got about 6%. Um, T fuel. So this looks pretty similar to what we just looked at. Big crashing dip here, a couple candles coming back up. Could be a fake out though. We got a red candle here. This could be going through a, you know, a dip sequence sort of resembling this. One, two, three. Then bounces back up to the SMA line. So had we been looking at this a couple hours ago, this would have been a good entry point. The resistance here to 2.49%. Go the, all the way to the SMA line, you'd still be in it, but you know. And you know the the very best way to use altcoin alert is is really just popping it for three to five percent. Oh, got alerts. Yeah, a few of them might start going off if uh Bitcoin keeps dropping like this. So I've got a 15 minute alert on INJ and one on FET as well. These are coins I was looking at um, probably a couple of days ago. So shouldn't waste an alert. Let's look at INJ. That one's been uh, pretty volatile lately. I thought I had it in my list. I don't. Five minute. So you can see I had a 15 minute RSI alert and it just touched in. And so that, that let me know that um, what I found is using the 15 minute alert and I'll just do one here. You right click in here on trading view, add alert on RSI. You will have to write in the 30 value if you're looking to catch a dip trade. And you can write a note here. A dip, trade, question mark. So, uh, so that's how you do that. I'm gonna cancel that for now because mine just went off. Ideally, I was using the 15-minute chart over the five-minute chart because I was getting second and third dips instead of first ones. But this is a first one because it's got several red candles dropping down. So I don't see this as a viable trade yet just keep the window open and keep an eye on it for a while or set an alert in the vicinity where we might see a third dip, which would probably be around 18, between 18.5 and 18, and uh, get in then. Um, or, you know, if you, what I've done from time to time is if I need to leave the computer, I would be away from my computer and or phone, I might just make a low buy order. It's a bit risky because if it crashes big, then you get stuck with an order that you don't really want. But I've had some success with that. I tend to put them pretty low in this situation, like down to probably below 18, maybe 17, nine, something like that. And so if, you know, if there's a crashing dip and a bounce, you know, they call that the dead cat bounce sometimes, or just a wick coming down and then the green candle, you can, you can get lucky and get your, uh, your order filled and still be in profit pretty quickly. So, but again, can be risky. I think the other one was fat. And it's already bouncing back up on the RSI here. And with this one, we've got one, two, you don't have a third dip yet. So I might set an alert or a low buy order, you know, in this vicinity here, maybe at 60 cents or a little bit below that to try to catch this. 
And if I did, you know, I'd be looking to get back there to this resistance here, probably for 7%. SMA line, a little higher, you know, about 8%. Uh, some more resistance here, 9.68%. Uh, some more here at 11%. So, you know, FET I've had kind of love-hate relationship with since I started trading. I've had some great trades and some some losses too on this one. So, but uh, yeah, this has potential. I think I'm gonna leave this window open for now and uh, and look at this um, maybe before we go. So, any other questions on Altcoin Alert? I'm gonna move on to iCoin Pro. If, uh, if there are none, so let me see. I, I think last week I totally forgot about the chat. <laughs> so I'm trying to remember how to get to it. Yeah, I'll look at it later. Um, all right, let's go over to iCoin Pro. And I've got the trade finder up. If you have the, I think the middle plan for iCoin Pro, 39 or $35 a month, then you'll have access to this trade finder, but not the buddy coin crawler, which is my preferred um, tool. And the RSI spy I like a lot too. So these are the two I use the most on iCoin Pro. Um, and I also look at the fear and greed index real quick in the morning. Looks like we're greedy now. It's lagging usually a day or so behind. And the oversold index is at zero. Nothing's oversold. I've never seen zero before. Interesting. All right, so everything's dipping right now, but it doesn't tell me what um, what dip it's in, whether it's first, second, third, fifth, tenth, whatever. So uh, let's look at this one here um, and real quick, you can add your exchange. You know, if you're on Coinbase Pro or Binance US, you can put that or you can have multiple exchanges in here. I trade mostly on Binance, you guys know, so. And then you can type in the, the coins that you're interested in seeing, whether you want squeeze, dip, anticipated dip or all of the above and then volume. Um, well, this is old. I should put this on 5 million now. So, mm, more alerts. Get back to that a little later. Okay, uh, so let's look at, uh, I've traded this coin before, a seller. I get a trading view window, it opens a new window. And since we're getting quite a few dips, this one's in a dip sequence too. One, two, it's kind of hard to see. It hasn't come up for a third dip yet, so I probably wouldn't buy this yet. It's still dipping pretty hard. I also also check Bitcoin to see what it's doing. It's got three red candles. So after seeing this kind of you know several coins dipping, I would just keep an eye on Bitcoin to see uh, what um, what it's doing before I traded anything. So we all know what a bully Bitcoin can be, and you know. A, two or 3% drop in Bitcoins, 10 to 20% in altcoins. So that, and then um, again, if you just have access to Trade Finder and not the other tools that I mentioned, you know, you might want to put a uh, an alert down here where you think the third dip might go. And you can also, you know, put a, an alert on the RSI. I'd probably do it on the 15 minute one though. Well, it's already in and there, so that wouldn't work. So at this point, you just have to put, you know, set an alert here where we think it would go. You know, okay. So I'm not going to 
do this alert because it looks like I'm going to have to ladder buy one or two coins. Uh, that's okay. Um, you know, ladder buying can be fun because you usually make more money. Uh, the downside is you see your first position go to crap. So, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, when you double up on the trade at the lower value, you know what? I might. I think I'll do one right now. All right, so this is a trade I made this morning based on, it's really more of a, of a swing trade uh, based on some information from uh, some people I follow. But it's in a long dip sequence here. Now, I'm not going to buy it because Bitcoin was still dipping. I do have one green candle now. So I'm going to wait for Bitcoin to, to level off. And assuming this coin responds in kind, I'll probably be buying my ladder buy up here somewhere. I bought this at you know 2.75, so it's dropped you know about nine percent. So if I get in like here at 2.55, if it goes back to where I bought it, I'll end up with um, like a three and a half to four percent trade on double the money. So essentially, depending on where I set my sell order, I'd sell both positions at the same time. Uh, I'd break even on the first, and then I'd have a really nice like 7 to 9% profit on the second position. So averaging those two positions out is how I determine the value of the trade percentage-wise. All right, so that was a quick review on ladder buying. I've done a few videos on this. Um, it's pretty easy to find on my uh, crypto trade uh, YouTube channel. So, okay, so let's look at um, iCoin Pro and the Buddy Coin Crawler. This is my favorite tool in iCoin Pro and I'm looking, I, I sort on this column here, average low to SMA value. If you're new to the channel, um, the SMA line is the pink line between the two Bollinger bands. I'll show that to you in a moment. The SM, and then the low, the average low is a 24 hour low for the coin. So these are coins that have room to move. And it's really easier to show you than, actually I think I've got, I'm in this one from this morning. Alien Worlds. This one's been a banger lately. I've got a small order in on this one. I'm gonna have to ladder buy this too. Yeah, right around here. So, um, is uh, this pink line's about the SMA line? And this green line here and this green line here are the Bollinger Bands, so halfway in between. And based on the Bitcoin dip, the other coins are following. So this one's dipping too. And one, two, might go to a third dip, say down here. To the SMA line would be almost 10%. These newer coins can be volatile. This one's only been on. Binance for a couple of weeks. I don't trade new coins a lot until I see them start to have, you know, some reasonable candle action. Um, you know, it's already gone through a dip and it's working its way back up after that. If it were still crashing and dipping from its, you know, high five minutes after it was released, I wouldn't be interested. But, but um, yeah, it doesn't show it very well. But on the one-hour chart. You know, you can see it had some ups and downs. So when I see this kind of thing, then, then I'm thinking this might uh, be something worth looking at. And the five minute chart. Yeah, we, if I could catch it down here. You know, as an initial trade up to the, up to even just this resistance here you know, 7%, that's good. That's a good day trade, so. All right, any questions on this one? I think I'll look at one more on the iCoin Pro 
buddy coin crawler. Uh, we don't have many values higher than 5%. We've only got three coins that, that in my opinion, qualify and, and they're newer, you know, these two new coins, I'm in both of them from this morning. So uh, I haven't looked at this one yet, UTK. If it's the one I'm thinking, it's been around for longer than the other two. Yeah, we, this one started um, back in October. Um, hit a high here, big correction, then all time highs uh, yesterday and the day before. So, hmm. once the once the candle hits the SMA line, and, and it's due over as far as you're counting your dips. So, and it squeezed in a little bit, then then starting to bubble out again. The best dip sequence is when there's a tight squeeze and then a big bubble like this, but the other way around. That's a bad example. Oh well, I don't have a good example on this chart. Anyway, um, so we're almost into a, th we are into a third dip technically. Bitcoin's still dipping though. I'm uh, not gonna trade anything as a long until uh, until Bitcoin shows me it's recovering. But if you could cut, catch this one down here, you know, 9% to the SMA line, you know, 6% to this resistance. 8% to this resistance, so. All right, any questions on the coins I showed you based on iCoin Pro's Buddy Coin Crawler? And, and John, I think it was you, was my um, explanation of the trade finder helpful? Um, no, not what I, Mine were kind of general questions. Um, the first one, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I my hear you phone. Was, okay, my phone was turned down. Hang on there. I can barely hear you. That's because uh, I lost my, I lost my, um, give me just a second. Okay. Need my speaker phone back on. All right. I got it, it got robbed from me. Ah, uh, bummer. Oh, uh, well, all right. Um, okay. So um, my first question was earlier on um, when I'm getting my first alerts of a dip, um, they're coming like 12 minutes into the dip. And so I noticed today I missed several um, good, uh, it, the, it had already gone back up after the third dip by the time I got notified. So I was wondering if there was a setting that I had off. No, like I mentioned, this un one flaw of Trade Finder, and that's why I don't use it very much, is it doesn't tell you which dip is coming up. So, and when I did use it, when I'd exhausted my options with Buddy Coin Crawler and RSI Spy and a couple of these others, and before I was in altcoin alert, I would go to Trade Finder and try to use this um, but I found it was I, what I should have done back then is what I just showed you earlier in this program is that uh, check out the dip and then set an alert. I, I didn't do that then and I should have. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. Then my, um, my other question is um, when I'm looking at resistance levels for selling, setting my sell order, um, I basically, I seem to only be getting you know, one, twos, and I'm not seeing very many sixes and 7% that I'm comfortable with. Um, and that SMA line always seems, if, if I were to use an SMA line as a re, I mean, as a sell point, that thing always dips tremendously. Um, and then I never, uh, it takes a long time for me to see my coin get back to what the original SMA line was. And I'm wondering if I'm missing something in the coins I'm looking at. Yeah, the, the other flaw of the trade, you know, the trade finders, it doesn't tell you uh, what, um, what the percentages are, um, the potential percentages are in the coins you're looking at. I know when I look at the, um, 
the buddy coin crawler and I have a value, you know, five to 10% that, you know, especially when I, I, I don't recognize some of these coins right away. I know they're newer coins. These are the ones that tend to have the biggest uh, spreads between, you know, the, the dips and the SMA line. And you don't even have to go to back to the SMA line to, to be profitable in some of those, like, um, you know, the super farm one we were looking at a little while ago. You know, if I could buy this here. It's not going to cooperate. And just go to this resistance here. You know, I've got 4.7% and I'm not to the SMA line yet. Um, you know, the SMA line puts me at five and a half percent. So these are the trades I'm I'm looking for when they when they make big giant dips. You know, the market's really volatile. You'll see, you know, sometimes eight, nine, ten percent. You know, going back up to the, you know, to the SMA line. I know Justin from uh, from iCoin Pro likes to set his buy orders down this the second deviation or third deviation third standard deviation here, this uh, extra Bollinger band I put in. You don't need to concern yourself necessarily with that for now, but it's just, it's a couple percent below the bottom of the Bollinger band to catch it really low. The downside is you're gonna miss some from time to time. But if you check on, you know, if you check on your charts, you're doing some computer work, you can you know, catch these trades down here sometimes before they, they pump back up. So, to answer you know, your question on trade finder, you're just gonna have to look at these individually and decide what your risk parameters are. Um, and since a lot of people on this are beginning day traders, one to 2% is great. You know, that's all profit is good. So don't, don't be you know, discouraged if you're only getting ones and twos. I know it seems you know, time consuming for not much reward, but you know, you're also getting invaluable training and, and chart reading and strategizing and things like that. So that's how I started. And I trade that that way for all of 19 and most of 2020. And then, you know, when the bull market started to hit pretty hard later in 2020, I started taking on more risk and trying to get, you know, five, eight, 10, 20% sometimes. So um, and then as you gain experience, you'll have a better idea just looking at a token, which ones are going to move the most. I know that Phantom, you know, is going to move more than Maker um, just because I have experience with those, you know. Uh, OGN in the past was a great mover, but now the price is so high that um, it's nearly $2. I, I remember trading this when it was 30 cents. So, you know, you'll gain that knowledge too with experience. So I don't know if that answers your questions, but. Uh... Yeah, it really does. Um, and, and, you know, to, to really go to the next level and make more profit, it really seems like um, going, buying the next level up just because the tools are better really makes sense. And yeah, I mean, the next level up, level up of, of, uh, of iCoin Pro. Right, we didn't have this option when I joined, um, and I found probably within my second or third month I was making more than the than the monthly cost. So, um, you know, that's something to take into consideration too. Uh, I think all if you're going to learn how to to trade crypto, you're going to need some information sources and some and some tools, and you just have to figure out how much you want to spend, and if if you're going to trade enough and successful enough, you know, to make that money back and and then profit obviously and just understand it's going to take you a few months of you know, attending zooms and, and going through trainings and paper trading and then real trading to uh, to feel confident enough to to take on some more monthly expenses with, uh, with more tools so i do try to send those of you on my email list some some free things that are, that are useful and i sent uh I sent a trading view tutorial a couple of weeks ago that I thought was really useful. It was free. So, um, and you know, if something, 
if you hear something I say, maybe you don't quite understand it well enough. Oh, Bitcoin just spiked down hard. So these could be going on from time to time. Anyway, uh, where was I? Um, well, it's not important. Um, you were saying that uh, like you sent out the trading view tutorial or if we had yeah. any questions from time to time. Right, I found that I would often watch a training that maybe I had paid for, and then I would go to YouTube and watch a couple free ones that would be less detailed and more general. And I found once I got the general knowledge, I was able to understand the concept better. So that's an option too. Just take it with a grain of salt, anything you see on, you know, on YouTube. So, including me. <laughs> All right, well, this is annoying. The downside of having 25 alerts going at any one moment is if Bitcoin dumps, then you know, 20 of them go off. So, and I might trade, actually, I'm not going to trade any of these because Bitcoin's still dropping. So, all right, so that's about all I have for iCoin Pro and Allcoin Alert. Um, I'll just go ahead and throw this open now to uh, any general crypto day trading questions you guys have. And um, let me know uh, what you guys want to talk about. You can, I have the chat open if you want to send a message or you can unmute yourself and speak up. Well, guys, as much as I enjoy the sound of my own voice, um, it's really helpful if, uh, if we get some questions. So don't make me start Yo, picking CJ, on people. You. My man, what's up, Thank Brooklyn? Thank you very much for everything you do, man. I try to understand more and more every time, and I try to go back and look at the, uh, the back calls. So thank you very much. I appreciate it, and uh, thanks again. All right, you're welcome. Um, do you have a question? That's a cool Bitcoin shirt. Okay, Sorry, no, no questions tonight. Actually, I do, but I have to go back and watch the video. I have to go out and do a homework for a little bit. Okay. All right, no worries. So uh, go ahead and do that. And you can find me on Slack or email. So. Hey, CJ. Uh, all right. And who's this? This is me, Shock. What's up, Mr. Shock? All right. I know it's, I'm beating a dead horse, but on the all the all coins alert, Mm -hmm. You know, they're the separation of the two lines mean nothing. So when you're looking at the alt alerts, you're looking at the, the top line, which is the white line. And all it is is an indicator to start looking at your other alternatives, right? Uh, yeah. I, I, know, I know I'm beating a dead horse, but I can't see how this alt alerts is actually helping on trying to analyze things other than just giving you a clue to do your more research on that coin. Well, that you shouldn't discount that latter part. Be, you know, having a clue to do research on on a coin um, when there's thousands of cryptos out there, I think is very useful. I mean, between Altcoin Alert and iCoin Pro, I'm to the point now where I probably do most of my analysis in 60 to 90 minutes a day. Um, and, and that, you know, they save a lot of time. So that's how I view it. Um, you know, if you can use, you know, the AA score tool to locate coins that have potential to, well, what's it say here to be profitable in the next 48 hours, uh, we're trying to find the, the next thing that's going to do this, you know, it may not go you know, double digits, but, you know, I've had some success with getting three, five, eight percent on all coin alert uh, on AA scores. So I like it for that reason. And then some of the other searches too, based on trading activity, you know, and the other sentiment scores have value as well. Um, but these are different. So don't, you don't necessarily combine the AA score with these. I do take the AA score into consideration a little bit when I'm sorting by trading activity. 
Right. Now, do you think about the, the 24 projection? Do you think that helps on the analysis at all on trying to see if that coin is going to be worth um, looking at? This column here, the 24 hour change or, or no, what? No, the percentage of, of, yeah, right there. This one? No, no, to your right, uh, three more columns. 24 hour projected right there, yeah. Oh, it's one hour projected range. Right. I did use this some over the summer. I haven't used it much that use it that much lately. If I sort by that, I'm usually looking for values in the upper range, five percent or higher. Um, and right now there aren't any. So okay. but this is probably the third or fourth one I go to. Um, since they you know improved the AA scores a few weeks ago, I'm using that probably 80% of the time. And after that, trading activity. Gotcha. So, okay, thanks. But, um, you know, those of you, if, if you signed up for Altcoin Alert and just thought you could look at the AA score and buy it wherever, I'm, you know, that's, if it was marketed that way, I'm sorry. I was a day trader before I ever got a hold of this. So, you know, I, I kind of knew what to do with it, but if you're not, if you don't have that training and then you get, start looking at AA scores and making trades without doing any kind of analysis, uh, I don't know what your results are gonna be, but probably um, probably less than 50% successful. Uh, they've said it's higher, as high as 76% successful, um, but, but I, they're not making a distinction between, you know, where the entry points are. So um, I think it's important to let's see, let's look at um, which one of these wrap was. So, yeah, this is it's helpful to have one, two, three dip knowledge when you look at in an AA score. Right, I meant to go to Digibyte. Mm -hmm it's probably gonna look similar to this. Right, and this is, this is exactly what we want. One, two, three, but it's still dipping, so we don't buy yet. But once we see a recovery here, um, you know, that might, that's a trade you probably wanna take. So you've got the AA score, plus you caught it at a good entry point, you know, now you're looking at four, five, six, seven percent, probably in less than a day. That's a really good day trade. So that's how I use it and how I encourage others to use it. Um, entry points are important. So we either want to catch a dip sequence like that or something like this, where it's above the SMA line and trending up. You know, if you caught it here and it's not a real good example. It's a 1.4%, not bad. So. Hey, yeah. CJ, on um, where, right where you are, I've gotten a little gun shy lately. Um, and I bought on the, uh, I bought on the third dip. And then, you know, I see maybe a green candle starting to form and I think, okay, I'll pull the trigger. Two, three, four, five minutes later, all of a sudden I've been going into the, fourth or fifth dip and you know ladder buying um i'm still new to so i guess am i doing something wrong or is that just par for the course See, those four or fifth dips coming out of nowhere and catching you uh they're gonna happen probably a third of the time give or take depending on overall market conditions and the coin so you know, if you're trading money and you don't know how to ladder buy, then you need then you need to use um, stop losses. Um, if you're still practicing day, uh, paper trading, then it's probably a lot less important. Uh, but um, yeah, I wouldn't. I made sure I mastered ladder buying because it was my understanding it was going to save me if I if something went against me um, before I did uh, before I had any money at risk. So. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, knowing how to ladder buy 
whether it's the iCoin Pro approach or, or my approach, which is, which is a little more risky because I, I, I wait for like eight to 10% drops on, on coins like this before I ladder buy. And then I try to get back to my initial purchase point where iCoin Pro would teach to get a little, little over halfway and just get 1% or 2% and get out. Um, and that's fine too. I do that sometimes too, but uh, yeah. Ladder buying is taught in the, do they teach it in their um, manual only on the $99 subscription? It's not in the, uh, it's not in the 40, the $39 subscription. Uh, I didn't know that. It really should be. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure because I went through that immediately. And uh, you're the only one I've heard talk about ladder buying. And I think that's because it's not in the um, $39 subscription. Take another look at that. Um, and I will. And email me back and let me know. If that's the case, I'm going to email Justin and tell him I think that's a bad idea. I don't think anybody should should be risking money in day trading if they don't know how to ladder buy. And that okay. should be part of the training. All right. Um, let's see. Okay, well, I think uh, any other questions? Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and end the video and uh, and um, then we'll just talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. So a quick exit here. Thank you so much for watching my uh, my trade of the day. And I just got an email from Patrick. He had, uh, he had a medical procedure. That's why he's not here. So uh, thoughts and prayers out to him. He's one of our regular attendees and quite colorful. So uh, best of luck to you, uh, Patrick, get well soon. And um, we'll see you guys next time.